Well, I've had my Sportsman 120 PDL for about two years now, and I've done a lot to customize it for my needs to make it the perfect fishing kayak for me. So I wanted to go through what I've done the last couple of years to get it just right, in my opinion, at least for my needs. The first thing I did was the Yak Attack Omega Pro rod holders. These are track mounted rod holders. They have a lot of adjustment to them, so you can really tailor them to exactly what you need for that day. And they work great for a medium weight spinning combo for trolling. If you go larger than that, a medium heavy or a heavy action or many bait caster rods, the butt of the rod here is too long and it will hit your legs as you're going back and forth pedaling your kayak. So if you want to use something heavier than a medium spinning combo, you'll want to get a longer extension bar here. The four inch from the factory again works great for a medium spinning setup, but if you want to go heavier than that, then you can get a longer extension bar and that will bring your rod farther away from your legs and you can use a heavier setup. The reason I haven't done that myself is that I typically use a medium weight spinning combo for trolling anyway. And I also don't like the idea of having my rod so far out. It makes it harder to reach to get the, get the rod out when you get a fish on. It also provides the fish with a lot more leverage to possibly break off the base of your rod holder mount because it's pulling from way out here. So I'm a little bit nervous about a 20 pound king salmon grabbing this and pulling way out here and possibly breaking that mount and losing my rod. The next thing I did was a comfort thing. So along this strap in the bottom of the seat, you can occasionally feel the bar that is the frame of the seat here on your lower back. So just a quick piece of pipe insulation with some zip ties is all you really need. And then if you ever do feel that bar, it's just going to be a little cushion back there. It's not going to be bothersome for your lower back. All right, now these flush mounted rod holders come from the factory, but the caps do not. These are from Navare Kayak Fishing. They are a huge upgrade in my opinion. I've had these things fill halfway with water from a rainstorm or from waves. And then I put a rod in there and I don't realize how much water's in there. And it just saturates the cork on the rod and it just gets all nasty. So it's a great idea to put a cap on those rod holders. So I've got one of those on all three rod holders now. I also have a carbon fiber angler paddle. I put a 40 inch ruler on there so I can quickly measure something. I don't have to worry about bringing a bump board or a tape measure out with me. I've always got a ruler handy. I can lean out of my seat and I can put the fish right up here. Most of the time I'm using this to measure a walleye to see if it's 15 inches to keep the walleye for dinner. So uh, it's easy to do that. I can also get a quick measurement up to 40 inches or up to the drip ring here is about 46 or up to the paddle edge is about 52. So I can get a quick measurement up to 52 inches on a muskie if I catch a real nice one. I've also got a cut down kayak fishing net. So this is a Frabel power lock rubberized net. I cut the handle down and I kept the cap. I put the cap back on after I cut it. So it's a smaller handle, easier to use in a kayak and it catches less wind. We have scupper plugs in the bottom of the PDL here. Most of the time, I don't want my stuff getting wet. And I'm often fishing when it's cold. Right now, the water temp is 32 and a half degrees. I've been out several times already. I don't want any of that cold water coming in and soaking my pants or getting my gear wet. So I have scupper holes in the bottom. I have used several different sets of scuppers and this is the only set that really fit the PDL well. So I'm gonna link to these ones on Amazon for you guys. If you're looking to get scupper plugs for your PDL, use these ones. We tried a couple other sets and they just didn't fit right. They would pop out. So again, I'll leave a link to those ones so you can get those if you want scupper plugs. The next thing is the crate. This is a milk crate with a motorcycle bungee net on the top. The net comes with six hooks that hook really nicely into the crate. It does work to hold all my stuff in if the boat flipped over. I've taken the crate and flipped it over and it does hold everything in there even with this anchor in there. If you haven't seen my how stable is the Old Town Sportsman PDL video, Take a look at that. You can see just how far you can push this boat before it actually flips over. It's extremely hard to flip, so I'm not real worried about it, but just in case, the net does lock all my stuff in place. I've also got an anchor here on a clothesline reel. So this is, the original cord is cut off. This is 550 paracord now wrapped into the clothesline reel. And I use this as an automatic retractor for the anchor. So I can pull it out. I tie it up to this gripper cleat at whatever depth I want. And when I'm ready, I pull the anchor up and I send that cord right back in. And I store this in a big plastic cup inside the crate. 
There's also two C-Dog triple rod holders mounted to the sides, uh, side and the back with zip ties. So I can carry six rods in there. I can put another couple rods in the flush mounted rod holders if I wanted to take more than six. Most of the time I'm just taking six. All right, the next thing is the kayak light. This is a Kayaloo Kaya light and it mounts to some sort of an eyelet. In the PDLs, there are four screws in the back deck here that are for a shallow water anchor system. So I took one of those out and I had an eye bolt in the garage that happened to fit the threads that were already in there in the little brass insert that's inside. So I can hook the carabiner now to that eyelet. Then you just pull on this bungee cord and it pulls the light down and you pull that nice and tight, wrap it around this thing and that's it. It's, it's nice and set. You can wiggle it around and it doesn't move. It operates by twisting on, twisting off. So it's a real nice 360 degree light. Uh, does a great job when I'm fishing at night or launching early in the morning for a tournament. The next thing is the trailer. This is an old rowboat trailer and it actually works great for a heavy kayak like this. The PDL is over 100 pounds empty so it does weigh quite a bit. It's a little bit cumbersome to launch but I love this little trailer. I just put a little sheet of plywood on top. There's a piece of foam that runs under here. I just take that on and off as I launch it, but it just keeps the hull from hitting the tongue of the, the trailer and possibly cracking the hull. I do have a Railblazer Sea Tug cart for it, but I can also just back right up to the water in most cases and launch right off the trailer. I also wanted to talk about some of the tools that I keep on board all the time. On a retractable cable here, I've got a braid scissors and a hemostat for small fish. I've got a fishing pliers and a split ring pliers that live in this pocket. And in this one, I've got a long pocket knife and a clippers. All of these things stay in the boat all the time. They're always on lanyards so they can't fall out, always within e easy reach as I'm fishing. In the bottom of the kayak, I've got the floor insert from Navari Kayak Fishing. This is a real thick plastic with a rubber gasket on the bottom. It slides right into that hole and mounts just like the PDL with the locking knob back here. That's something that I use if I want to take it out and use it as a paddle kayak in a really shallow area or area with a ton of vegetation where maybe I'm out frog fishing for the day and I just don't expect that I'm going to be able to use the pedals very much anyway because the prop will get tangled up in plants. So I'll use that instead. All right, next is the Humminbird Helix 7 unit that I put on. This is a really nice match with the PDL. It has side scan and GPS on it too. The bottom of the hull is carved out, so there's a nice spot to put the transducer where it's somewhat protected. And then the wire can come up through this scupper hole and it can run in many different places. You can choose to use a through hull wiring kit and drill holes into the hull and have it go in and pop out wherever you want. I chose to cut a slit in the front of the hatch cover and then I have my wires running right in through there. So I didn't have to drill any holes in the boat for that. The wires go into the front hatch cover. I've got my 18 amp hour lithium battery down in there. The wires then come back out and they hook up to the Humminbird on the side rail here. If you did a through hull wiring kit, you could have the wires go right in underneath the hatch cover, come out right next to the Helix 7 and they could go up there and it would just be a few inches of wires going right up to your unit. In my case, I think this is pretty clean too. It's only about 18 inches of wires. They're not really in the way of my pedals or anything like that. So I don't plan on changing this and using a through haul wiring kit. I'm going to leave it just the way that it is. I've also got a couple of camera mounts up here if I want to do some filming while I'm fishing or take a quick picture of a fish that I got. Up on the front, I've got a solar powered crank flashlight so it can charge during the day. If I launch in the morning and I've got this on, I can turn it off when it gets light out and it'll charge back up through the rest of the day. There's some Velcro on the unit itself and Velcro on the hull. So it mounts up there, it's pretty secure. I've never had it fall off even in waves. So I use that a lot. The last thing I'll talk about is the floating prop nut for the PDL. This is a nice option. It allows you to take off the prop really easily. The prop replacement on the water is very quick, very fast. It takes a couple minutes. I've got a video showing how to do that if you're interested. And if you drop the prop nut in the water, it won't sink and leave you stranded out there. So it's a nice option to have. If you have any other questions about my setup, please drop those in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you next time.